good morning. It's about half past seven. I set my alarm for seven o'clock this morning and I slept through till then, although I did wake up a couple of times. A little bit cold. Now the forecast was for about zero on the top of Kinder, maybe minus one, but as you can see, the bivy is covered in ice. It was absolutely covered and it certainly is colder than zero or minus one. It feels like probably minus four, minus five, something like that. It's really, really, really cold this morning. Everything's all crunchy. I've got a couple of time lapses set up. <laughs> one looking over towards Manchester and the other towards that awesome sunrise over there. A bit of cloud kind of sweeping in from the south. And my plan today is to cook some breakfast. I'm gonna head along towards Kinder Downfall, up to a trig point that I can see glistening in the sun over there, across to the very corner of the escarpment. And then I'm probably gonna go down, if I've got the energy, I think, down to Mill Hill, have a look at the wreckage there, down to another plane wreckage, just to the right of Mill Hill, come back up onto the Kinder Plateau and then follow it along its whole northern edge to the other um, trig point on the far side. Have a look at two smaller plane wreckages over there and then head down towards Edale. Um, but the first thing actually before heading over towards Kinder Downfall, I am going to see if I can get myself up to the highest point on the plateau at 636 metres, which is only 500 metres, I think, over that way. Um, but let's get a brew on and some breakfast. It's so cold. Ooh. Had breakfast I cooked myself a sea to summit scrambled egg with cheese and it was okay um, not as good as like the Wayfarers all-day breakfast or something I actually quite like them um, but for the weight it's 87 grams and it's like 450 calories or something so it's actually okay maybe next time I'll bring a bit of salt with me to add to it maybe like a bit of ketchup or something I don't know I'll try something else um, but I'm gonna get packed up it's about eight o'clock and the sun is really starting to come up now. Hopefully the tent will start to defrost a little bit, but I'm gonna get packed up. Here we go, leave no trace. because I couldn't get here yesterday as there's a couple of people here I thought I'd quickly nip over touch the trig and the highest point on Kinder Scout is over that way so I'm going to head along this path and there's a faint path that goes across and I think it's somewhere over there about 800 meters in a straight line wonderful views Edale is down that way Manchester over that way and Kinder Downfall is over that way. And I've got a wonderful view of Pym Chair and the Woolpacks over there. 
lovely mist down in Edale. What a gorgeous morning. So I've made it to the true summit of Kinder Scout. This is 636 meters. And all there is is a little post and I found a little rock. So maybe I think officially like this point here is the highest, but <laughs> so there is a small can on a little bit of grass over there. That's actually a really good place to wild camp. It's really flat and it's above all of the wet moorland. So in future, I think that might be a good place, especially if I want to get some nighttime photography. Um, whereas where I was on the far edge over there, I got quite a lot of light from Manchester, which meant when I looked out at the stars, I couldn't really see that many. So I didn't do any nighttime time lapses. Um, it's really deceiving around here as to where the highest point was. I had to keep checking the GPS because there's a stake over on the horizon over there. That looks higher. There's another stake over there that looks higher. And to be fair, they're probably all about the same height. Uh, even the trick point I can see on Kinder Low, that even looks higher, but I can't actually see the, the distant horizon to see whether or not it is. But I'm very, very proud to have made it to 636 meters on Kinder Scout Summit. So I finally made it onto the path now that runs around the entire plateau on Kinder Scout. I can see it running off all the way there. Uh, Kinder Town Falls probably only a few hundred meters that way. And I can see it running off around these rocks. And I joined it just here where I um, <laughs> very nearly slipped over, straight onto a bit of ice, managed to save it. <laughs> but um, I can see ahead of me, actually down here, is Mermaid's Pool, and I could see that from where I was camping last night. And I'm pretty sure that is where someone was wild camping as well, because I could constantly see this little white light over in the distance. It's really dim, and I'm sure that is where they were camping. But for now, I'm gonna head along here, check out Kinder Downfall, and then there is a trig point. I can't quite see it, but it's just on this highest point on the horizon, and that's my next target after that. the lovely waterfall of Kinder Downfall and as you can see the wind is channeling up this valley and it makes the water spray back up onto the top of the moors and a lot of the water that is actually on top of Kinder Scout comes down this river and in full winter conditions it's actually a really popular ice climbing spot. Last time I was here or the time before that I can't remember um, I managed to see um, some peregrine falcons swooping around which is really awesome 
and it was actually around here that I was considering camping tonight if I had enough time. I love the sound of the falling water and I can see some areas of grass that I'd have been able to pitch up at and the view would have been lovely over that way. So I'm up on the 624 metre summit in the very far northeastern corner of the Kinder Plateau and I did not know there were two triggs. There's one on its side down here. Um, clearly it's collapsed at some point and then they've replaced it with a new one. Sadly, the views are completely gone now. As I was passing Kinder Downfall, I could see where I was camping, the, the cloud level have dropped massively and now it's pretty much level with me. So I don't imagine I'm going to get many good views. Perhaps when I'm on the very northern edge and walking along the escarpment I might get some views down but for the moment here there's no views at all anyway. It's so flat but very proud to have reached the top of this place. Now I've got a choice to make as to whether or not I go and visit those two other airplane wreckages. The one on Mill Hill that I've been to before and a new one just down the north face of uh, Kinder. Never been to that one before so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to this northeastern, no, northwestern corner, sorry, of the uh, plateau and uh, judge from there whether or not it's worth going down if the weather is deteriorating. If not, I'll just continue along the edge of the plateau to the trig point on the far western edge and there's two airplane crash crashes or wreckages that I want to go and see over there before I start heading down. down to Mill Hill is just over here. Nice big cairn behind me marking this corner. Now I've got a choice of whether or not I go up Mill Hill and have a look at the Liberator crash site over there and also another crash site down this side. And I think what I'm going to do, as I've been up on Mill Hill before, I think I'm going to bail on that bit to save myself about half an hour, 45 minutes. It's now 11 o'clock and I'm, I am going to go down though and have a look at this new crash site that I've never been to before and then come back up this way and then straight across the northern edge of the plateau. So once you've descended down that northwestern corner of the Kinder Plateau, 
there is a really faint path off to the right. Now it's very, very easily missed, but it contours around the hillside and you need to look out for this big boulder up here because this is where you need to branch off and just go cross country. The path is incredibly faint. As you can see, it stretches off in front of me, but I need to branch off down there because I can see the crash site down here. It's probably four or 500 meters in a dead straight line. I've just zoomed in on the camera. I can see some large bits of wreckage. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And on a bit of a bitter note, I'm slightly gutted I didn't bring my drone today. I knew it was going to be too windy to use it, but actually here, the wind is far less, so I could have got away with it, but it would have been an extra kilo and a half to carry, and I don't think I would have managed it. My rucksack's heavy enough as it is, but let's go and have a look at this awesome wreckage of a sabre. So I've just arrived at the crash site and there's a really sad feeling here. There's a lovely memorial just at the top near where my rucksack is. And this is where two North American Sabres F Mark IVs either collided in midair or crashed onto the side of the hill here on Kinder. No one is entirely sure exactly what happened, but sadly both pilots of the aircraft died. James Desmond Horn, a flying officer, and Alan Green, a flight lieutenant. It's quite amazing what you can actually make out from the wreckage. I mean, you've still got <laughs> the rubber tire here of some of the landing gear. And then I've noticed this, it's the tail wing. You can see the V shape at the back of the aircraft. And if I come over this way, you've got large sections of wings just strewn over the hillside. Some of the metal on the top is really, really corroded, but see here, the inside metal is like good as new considering the crash happened sort of 50, 60 years ago. It really is quite a sad place, but I feel like I'm respecting the two people that died here by visiting the place that they died and documenting what is still left. I'm gonna sit and rest here for a little bit before heading back up onto the top of the Kinder Plateau. I originally was gonna head back up the path that I took on the way down, but coming here, I found a little stile just to the right-hand side of this little gully here, and I'm gonna head straight up the north face. finally got up onto the top of the plateau although I've come across this path here and it seems to be fairly well defined as it works its way around. I've had a quick look on Google Maps and it actually the satellite image shows it going straight up towards those rocks where it joins the main path around the top of the plateau so that rather than going straight up anymore I might as well just follow this path around to join it later on. I'm heading 
along to that awesome peak over there which looks like a breaking wave i think that's fairbrook nays i'm not quite sure wait until i get there wonderful view over towards bleaklow bleaklow head over there and there's high is it high white stones i think that's where the b29 super fortress crash site is and i was there a couple of years ago and i'll pop a link in the video below to that one top of Nether Red Brook which you can see runs down the northern end of the Kinder Plateau here. I'm about one kilometre away from Fairbrook Nays over there and then I think it's about another three-ish kilometres to the trig point at the far eastern end. end of Fairbrook Nays. There's this awesome rock formation next to me and I've got a wonderful view all the way down the seal edge. So I'm going to continue along the escarpment past this lovely outcrop of rocks and then it goes in again and then around and I've got a feeling it might be the one over in the distance is where I go around again before I cross the plateau at the narrowest point towards the last trig. Now I've got to be careful I'm starting to run out to two now already so it gives me maybe two, three, two, four, three, five, four hours of daylight I reckon I might be able to do it I definitely want to get to the trig and then it's just after that there's two airplane crashes or wreckages next to each other but I do need to sit down and have some food as well I've only had a little snack since breakfast so maybe if I can get another hour done I might sit somewhere over there and have something to eat just reached the next little corner which there's an awesome rock formation there and I can see right along the whole of Seal Edge now all the way down to where I need to go where it turns inward again goes left and then I'll cut off the path up to the trig point and um, that's about a kilometer and a half to the end of Seal Edge over there 
And again, I've still not had lunch yet. So I think I'm gonna nestle myself amongst these rocks in about 10 minutes time and have a decent rest. I've had quite a few rests actually today, just a few minutes here and there. A couple a bit longer because my thighs keep on nearly cramping up. It's really, really annoying. I guess I must have a bit of an electrolyte imbalance. So once I've had some food, hopefully the cramping will cease. just perched myself on this little rock slightly out of the wind jet boils on down here and I'm having a chicken tikka masala from extreme adventure foods 800 calorie meal so it's a high calorie meal and I'm hoping some of the electrolytes in there are gonna definitely stop this cramp that I'm getting but I'm actually looking forward to it I've never tried it before we'll see how it is at the final corner you can see the entire escarpment that I've come along right along this edge you can see an outcrop in the middle that's where I had lunch I've come along here not on this lower path but on the higher path and check this out quickly awesome like bowl of water there just been eroded there's lots of smaller ones too the winds really picked up hopefully you can hear me and I'm gonna be walking along here going left and I can actually make out the trick point is over there I can see a little white trick point so I'm going to continue around branch off the path up towards the trick and then the other two crash sites are just beyond the trick point and then I'm going to cross the moor and head down ringing Roger I think I don't think I've got time to continue along or energy <laughs> to continue along and then go down probably Jacob's Ladder that's where I originally intended to do a full circuit almost but not today, knackered. Keep getting bits of cramp in my legs. And next goal, trick point.
So I'm now at the point where I leave the path along the escarpment. I've just seen a little faint path here. And when I was standing at those rocks over there, I could see it led in a dead straight line towards the tree point. And I reckon it's only about 300 meters over there. So 10 minutes or so, and I should be at the last trig. Made it to the far eastern trig point at 590 meters above sea level on the Kinder Plateau. And that is three trig points today, as well as one crash site. And the other two crash sites, one is just a few hundred meters over there, and the other a few hundred meters that way towards Ringing Roger, which is gonna be my way down. Now I'm actually gonna have a bit of a rest again. Give myself 10 minutes, let the legs recover. I'm exhausted, absolutely exhausted. And although the path might be like straight in a straight line on the map, it's really not. Constant little zigzags, winding around rocks, trying to dodge the deepest bogs. It's, it's really hard work, but I'm so proud to be here. I can see in that direction, probably the highest point on the Kinder Plateau, where I was earlier. Um, I don't think from here I can make out Kinderlow, it will be just down the other side. I can see Grinslow Knoll over there, a couple of people on there, and to the right of that probably the Woolpacks. Uh, just amazing and cold, windy, breathtaking, boggy, <laughs> all the words in the dictionary and for people looking to explore the quietest part of kinder just follow this northern edge it's just stunning some really steep drops in places some great rocky outcrops and i've seen two people in the probable seven six or seven miles wherever i've done along this northern edge and I've just spotted two people over there as well. So, four people. There's two on a little outcrop over there. But let's have a rest and take some photos. So this is it. This is the site where a Halifax Mark II crashed in the early hours of October 5th, 1943. The impact of the crash killed Ernest Hatfield Fenning, Jean Gilbert Felix Fortin, Frank Allen Squibbs, Boris Carl Short, and then Eric George Lane sadly died of his injuries. Two others who were injured in the crash were Victor Garland and James B. Mack.
this third crash site has been proven really difficult to find. All the other ones I managed to locate on Google Maps, you can see them, so I knew exactly where I needed to go. But this one was based solely on using the landscape, the background, trying to work out exactly where it is. And I've actually found it. There is not much left here. You've got just a little bit of metal down here. And that's all that remains at this crash site. It's here that a Wellington Mark III crashed on the 26th of January 1943. Thankfully, at this crash site, everyone survived, unlike many others that I visited at the two crash sites today. I'm so proud that I managed to visit all three trig points, the official highest point on Kinder Scout, and the three plane wreckages that I really wanted to visit. Um, I am sad that I haven't seen the one, the Liberator on Mill Hill, but I have been there before on a day when I had the drone, so I'll pop a couple of shots up of the drone footage that I had from that video and it is a spectacular crash site. There's loads of wreckage, unlike these last two. But it's time for me to head down. I need to try and work my way across this rather peaty landscape to the um, like terrace path across, the plateau path, and over towards Ringing Roger, just there, straight down to Edale and back to the car. So I'm on my way down from Ringing Roger, which is up there behind me. And I've never been down this route before. And I was not expecting a view like this of the whole of the Vale of Edale. The sun's setting behind Grinslow Knoll. And you've got Lord Sea over there, Mamtor. You can see the massive Iron Age earthworks on Mamtor well, very well from here. Back tour and then Loose Hill and Wind Hill. Absolutely epic view to end the day. And I'm now heading on a zigzag path down into the village of Edale. And I'm parked just over at Barber Booth over there. Oh my God, I am downwind of the old Nags Head pub and that food smells damn good.
thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit like pop a comment below hit subscribe and ring the bell to keep up to date as videos are released weekly and all i can say is cheerio and see you in the next video